how do we know if our forecasting did a good job with our time series data? Well, a good forecasting model needs to pass three different tests. First of all, random errors, two, symmetric errors, and three, constant error size. So let's start with our first test, which is the random errors. So we want our errors to have no predictable pattern. They should be independent of previous errors, and therefore there should be no systematic over or under prediction. And we can test this with an ACF plot or an autocorrelation function plot. So what exactly is ACF? Well, ACF stands for autocorrelation function. And if we break that down, we see that auto means self and correlation means relationship strength. So we're measuring how our errors relate to themselves at different time points. Now let's break down what an ACF plot looks like. So the vertical bars here show correlation strength and those range from negative one to one. The horizontal axis shows the time lags, which is how far apart we're comparing our errors. These blue dashed lines, there are 95% confidence bounds. Any bars that are inside these blue dashed lines are probably just random chance. Any bars that are outside of them, that means we have a pattern. So this first tall bar at lag zero looks like a problem because it's outside of our blue dashed lines. However, this first bar actually is always exactly one. At lag zero, we're comparing each error with itself. And when you compare anything with itself, you get perfect correlation. It's like asking if you're identical to yourself and the answer is always yes. That's why we, we can basically ignore this first bar when interpreting the plot. But let's look at the other bars. Remember that our blue dashed lines are our 95% confidence bounds. And in statistical terms, it means that if your errors are truly random, about 95% of bars should fall within these lines. Any bar crossing these lines is statistically significant. And if you have more than 5% of these bars outside of these lines, your errors probably aren't random. For example, if errors are consistently positive, followed by a negative, then our model might be too slow to react to changes. Or if errors show a pattern every 12 months, then we're likely missing some seasonal effect. Um, and these patterns are like your data trying to tell you, hey, there's still something that you could use to make better predictions. And a good forecasting model should extract all predictable patterns, leaving only random noise in the errors. So what do we look for in an ACF plot? is for most spikes to stay within the blue dashed lines. So if they don't, that means our errors have patterns that we could predict. And if we can predict our errors, our model isn't doing its full job. The second thing is that our errors need to be symmetric. So are we equally likely to overpredict as we are to underpredict? Do the positive and negative errors balance out? And is the average error close to zero? And for this, we can use a simple histogram of plotting the errors. So histogram tells us the distribution of our errors. So the horizontal axis shows error values. Negative values means that we predicted too low. And positive values means that we predicted too high. Zero means a perfect prediction. The vertical axis shows how often each error value occurs. And the blue curve, that's the ideal normal distribution that we're aiming for. Why does this symmetry matter? Symmetry in our errors is crucial because if our histogram leans left or right, it means that we're consistently over or under predicting. And this bias suggests that our model is systematically wrong in one direction. You can think of it like a weighted coin. If it lands on his hat more often than it stills, then you know, something's not right. In technical terms, it means that our average or our mean should be very close to zero. The median also should be near zero, and both sides of the distribution should mirror each other. And finally, we want to make sure that we have a consistent error size. So errors should be maintained in a similar magnitude over time, there should be no sudden increases in error size and no pattern of any growing errors. When we plot errors over time, we're looking at how their magnitude changes. The vertical axis shows error size and the horizontal axis shows time. What we want to see and what a good forecast should show is that errors should be bouncing randomly between consistent bounds. There should be no trends in error size and there should be no sudden changes in variability. There are two main points to watch for. First of all, the funnel effect and secondly, the step change. The funnel effect 
shows that errors are gradually getting larger. It's like a kind of a megaphone shape. And this is more common in long-term forecast. The second one is a step change where we have a sudden change in error size. It's like hitting a different road surface. Uh, it often indicates a structural change in your data. And both of these tell us that our model's reliability isn't constant. If you find your inconsistent errors, there are a few things that you can do. You can either consider transforming your data, for example, taking logs. You can also use weighted methods that adapt to changing variants, or you can split your analysis at clear change points. So whenever you use forecasting with time series data, make sure to always check if your forecast is actually accurate by checking for random errors, symmetric errors, and consistent error size over time.